I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, Jacques here. So I'm finally completely done with my Grasshopper Escapement Clock. Inspired by the design of John Harrison. So I have some links below where I got some of the information for this clock, but here it is running. The files are going to be available on my mini factory. I'll also put the link below where you can get them, buy them. I'm almost done with the instruction that goes with the clock, but it will take you a while to print all the parts. There's close to 100 parts total. Some are just multiple, lots of nuts and bolts and small little parts, but expect to spend a week or two to print all the parts if you are interested. With the file I also have a XHTML document that you can view in a browser and it will give you a 3D representation of the clock that you can turn around and see how all the parts come together as a help for building the clock. There's still some tuning to do to get it to run properly. It seems it seems it's not balanced quite right. I did check the level. I think it's due to the nature of the escapement that's not quite symmetrical. There's a shorter pallet here that has more travel, longer pallet with less travel on this side because the tick that you hear it's not when the pallet engages the escape wheel but it's when they hit the composer. In total it's been running over two weeks and never stopped. It's a little bit overpowered, a little bit too much swing of the pendulum actually. The latest thing I did is put a plate at the bottom here that holds the clock in place. That way when I want to go rewind, I can just rewind without putting the clock out of balance, out of level. And then notice that when I rewind the escapement keeps working because I put a maintain power spring into it. Here's an earlier model of my maintaining maintain spring. So the power comes on this end, turns this way, tighten up the spring. See it here. So this builds the power in the spring and then the maintain ratchet holds that disc and it still has this power to power the clock. The spring as it is here it will power the clock for over a minute. So I can be rewinding for one minute and the clock will still go. After that it will stop. So there's a weight 3.4 kilos that powers that clock for 24 hours. 25, 26. Power comes here. Uh, rewind. Now uh, there's a ratchet here. And then from this big wheel the power goes to the main thing. Here at the back on the pinion, and there's the maintain spring. You can see, and then this big wheel powers the escape wheel here. Escape wheel has 120 teeth, it takes four minutes for full rotation. So here there's a second indicator, every time every motion it's one second. 
and then the 60 division here. Second indicator should be able to move on those little pushing in the center. So this is the entry palette. See the bigger travel that it has. The exit palette. Smaller travel. On this side I have those nuts. That's to balance the escapement. So it hangs it's balanced right and left because the left side is longer. So the first adjustment to get the clock running, I'm going to do it at the bottom on the bob. And once I get about a minute, I have another nut up here that I can turn fine adjustment without stopping the clock. Last feature that I want to show in here, there's a clutch, so when I can turn the hands to adjust the time, the clutch will spin on that shaft here. And the power for the hands comes from that little eight teeth gear that's on the same shaft as the maintain power device. And then down here I made that plate that holds the clock to the wall and there's graduation so the one the more in the middle that's five degree of swing then the six degree, the last one is seven. So I think it's safe to say that the clock has at least, I would say, 17 degree of, sp of swing, right and left, complete. According to John Harrison, 15 should be the maximum, and 12 optimal. Here's a close-up view on the suspension spring and it has circular cheeks also that should help with the wide spring uh, with the wide swing of the pendulum to keep it in good timing. So that was an interesting adventure of designing this clock still need to fine-tune it because I never got it of taking it apart, making pictures and changing parts, putting it back together but I would like to let it run for a couple of weeks and fine-tune the timing and see how good of a timekeeper it can be. For sure what I've seen it seems much more precise and a better timekeeper than this clock the, with the gram escapement for what I've seen. <laughs> Stay tuned, see how it goes, please like, subscribe and I'll see you in some more videos. Thank you for watching. Bye!